If you're new to Mexico and working remotely, here's something you need to know. The electrical grid can be a bit unpredictable. In Merida, Mexico, where I live, losing power briefly for once a week or multiple days isn't an unusual occurrence for some people. And until at least 2027, as the city grows faster than its power supply, outages will be a part of normal life. And when you're in the middle of a Zoom call or trying to meet a deadline, that's not just frustrating, it can cost you real money. I've been there. But with the right plan, you can keep working, stay comfortable, and ride out the storm. So today, I'm breaking down exactly how to do it. I'll walk you through the three levels of power interruptions, show you how to organize your house into zones, and then show you my complete strategy for beating power outages in action. Let's get it. The first thing you need to figure out is what matters the most to you during a power outage. For remote workers, that usually comes down to three things. Number one is internet and the computer system. Without those things, you're dead in the water. And number two is a light source and some type of fan to keep you cool because if you're in Merida, Mexico, air movement is a non-negotiable. And number three is the refrigerator. You wanna keep your drinks cold and your food safe from spoiling so you don't waste a lot of money. Those are the priorities for most people and everything else is pretty optional. But not all power outages are the same. Most here in Merida, Mexico are simple blips, anywhere from one to 10 minutes. Some last 30 minutes to a few hours, others can stretch for half a day or even more. That's why I organized my plan into three different levels of power interruption. Level one are the short outages up to 30 minutes. Level two are the medium outages up to six hours. And level three are the long outages that are six hours plus that might drag on for days and days after a major storm or a hurricane. Now for level one outages, which are the short outages less than 30 minutes, all you really need is a UPS, or as they're called here in Mexico, a no break. With the right size UPS, your internet and computers can keep running without missing a beat. I use a Barracuda UPS that costs about $100 when I bought it, and that alone takes care of most outages here in Merida. The Barracuda will run my computer and my internet for about 30 to 35 minutes before I need to switch to something else. For level two outages, once the lights stay off for more than 30 minutes, the UPS just isn't enough. Enough. That's where a system like a solar power station would come in. I use a power station that uses the Life PO4 batteries, which are lithium ion phosphate batteries that are a lot safer. They last longer, up to 3,000 power cycles, and can be charged three ways with the wall outlet, solar panels, or even your car's cigarette lighter plug. Many models work like a UPS, passing power through them and taking over instantly when the grid drops. The power station that I purchased was the Vitamin Flash Speed 1500, and it has a total capacity of 1500 watts and can be expanded to 3000 watts with an extra battery pack. Now, my office setup with my internet gear, my computer, one fan, and a light draws about 100 watts. On paper, that's about 15 hours on the Vitamin 1500. However, realistically, after conversion losses, it's about 11 hours. That runtime then drops to about four to five hours after adding the refrigerator. So in total, running my office equipment and the refrigerator, I get about six to eight hours before the power station needs to be recharged. After about six to eight hours, we're now in a level three outage, which is a long-term outage. And when that happens, it's time to move past the power station system and switch over to my gas inverter generator. Now, the inverter part of the gas inverter generator is unlike traditional generators. Inverter models are quieter. They adjust their speed based on the load that's on the generator. They're safer for electronics. They convert the AC power to DC and then back to AC, which puts out a pure sine wave for your electronics. They're also more fuel efficient because they have a variable engine. So they can run the engine at 3,600 RPMs or they can step it down to 1,500 RPMs based on the load that's currently on the system. Now I keep about six gallons of fuel on hand. I have a five gallon gas can and a one gallon gas can. And at a light load, that gives me roughly about 36 hours of power generation using my generator although there are multiple refuels that have to happen during that time because my generator only holds 
one gallon of gas at a time. 36 hours sounds like a lot, but here's the problem. After storms, gas stations may not be able to pump fuel because those pumps use electricity. Gas goes bad if you store it for too long. So storing gas or having gas in your system for too long will gum it up and, and just make things work poorly. And you must run your generator far away from the house to avoid the poisonous fumes. The last thing you want is to have your generator by a window or a patio door and having those fumes come back into the house. So it needs to be far away from the house, which means you need the proper extension cables and things of that nature. Now, if you're still with me, we've talked about the levels of power outages. Let's talk about organizing your house into zones. I divide my home into zones with actual watt numbers. That way I always know what I can power and for how long. Zone one is my office and it uses about 93 watts. That's the internet, that's the computer, that's my monitor. Those are the highest priority. Zone two is my kitchen and it uses about 200 watts. That's powering my refrigerator, that's powering the networking gear that's in that part of the house, which is my VPN router, my deco mesh access point. And essentially, I, I start those things at about three to four hours after the initial outage. Zone three is my bedroom. So during an outage, I would run three fans, I would have lights, and I would charge all of my equipment like my iPhones, my watches, uh, things of that nature. Anything that I normally charge at night, I would make sure that those things can charge at night as well. The reality is at night when there's a power outage, you want to be kind of comfortable. So we'd probably have the windows and the doors open and we would be running off of the vitamin at night so it's quiet and we don't have to worry about refueling anything. So just before bed, I would top that off. Now zone four is my living room and it runs at about 200 watts or 260 watts plus or minus. The living room has a 65 inch TV and three fans. So that's an added zone that's really a nice to have. If everything in my system is running perfectly, like the generator is recharging the battery and it's not using a lot of fuel, we can have a little bit of comfort and watch TV instead of our iPads and things of that nature. All right, zone five is this patio and it uses about 260 watts. And in that zone, I have a 65 inch TV, a deco mesh access point and three fans. This is actually the lowest priority zone and again we only use it if everything is running correctly here's how I rotate through my levels level one is zone one and it's the office and it's on a UPS that's for less than 30 minutes level two is up to six hours and that's zones one and zones two on my power station level three is six hours plus and that's where we rotate zones as needed with the generator running essential items and recharging the power station. This means I'm never guessing. I know exactly what to turn on and how to stretch my gear as long as possible. Now, how do you build a plan of your own? So the first thing you wanna do is identify your essential items. For me, that's the internet, lights, and the fridge. The next thing you wanna do is collect those numbers. Take pictures of all the device labels and add up the watts. I'm actually working on a web application on my website that'll help you calculate that. So go and check it out. I'll leave a link to that in the description notes below. Number three is organize all of your essential things into zones. Decide which items get power first and what can wait. And number four is buy the gear based on your consumption. Here's what I spent. So the UPS or the no break as they call them in Mexico cost roughly $100 at Radio Shack, I believe. The second thing I bought was the power station, which will run you between $700 and $1,100 for a 1500 watt power station. Now for $1,100 to $1,700, you can get up to 3000 watts. I opted to go the low end and I bought the Vita Man for $700. The next thing that I bought was the gas inverter generator. A gas inverter generator that goes 2,000 watts to 3,000 watts will run you between 800 and 2,000 US dollars. A starter system, as you can see, will cost around $1,600 and that's buying all of the gear here in Mexico. A lot of these things, the UPSs, the, the Vita Mans or the power stations, they're super heavy and they're batteries. So you can't fly those in or ship them in via Amazon. A lot of times you have to get that stuff delivered locally 
and I'll leave links to where I got all the things in the description notes below. So that's it. A few extra things you might wanna consider are your extension cords. I use a heavy duty 12 gauge cable so that I can place my generator all the way in the back in my laundry area to cut down on the fumes and the noise but still keep clean power into the house. I'll drop links to all the gear in the description notes below and if you'll use those links, it will help support the channel. So that's my complete backup plan. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna know more about living in Mexico and how to overcome some of those obstacles. Leave me a comment below and let me know what is the most important thing for you. If you're here in Mexico during a power outage, is it the internet? Is it your fridge or is it fans or AC? Even? I look forward to seeing your comments below. And if you wanna know more about how to save on your electric bill, check out this video over here. Until next time, make some plans, Monty. I'm out.